All right, so um, here we are once again, ready to get started. Oh, well, here we go. Okay, hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, and welcome. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, here we are once again, ready to get started. This is going to be uh, well, one of our last classes. This is going to be basically um. You know, the last of Tuesday, of Tuesdays that we're going to be working together. So yeah, it's has been as previously stated, an amazing experience thus far. And uh, for this evening, we are basically only going to be working on the wrap up. You know, finishing up the um, well, the information that we have from the from the platform. So that's like the main idea for this evening. Um, there is not necessarily going to be much more going on. And apart from that, we also have to, um, well, to work around probably the exercises or, you know, some of the things that we might need to solve to get this whole thing um, figured out. Because I know that as it is the last few classes of the week or, you know, or the module, uh, we are going to need to maybe clarify one or two doubts here and there. Um, but yeah, um, for this evening, the main topic or the main idea is for us to go ahead and practice the conversation that we had about Unreal um, conditionals. Then we also have antonyms, which as I was explaining yesterday, are very common in English. Um, you know, synonyms and antonyms, they are both very, very common. There are always going to be, um, you know, words that are opposites or similar to the other. So, yeah, this is something that has, uh, you know, part in basically every language that exists. And English is, of course, not an exception. And then we also have the past models, like how can we use model, model verbs in the past or what are the modal verbs that we can use in the past? So those are going to be the main things, the main um, like ideas to follow through. Uh, but yeah, of course, as always, there is always a chance for us to go ahead and you know practice other things like um, I don't know the question for the night or things like those. And for tomorrow, the idea for tomorrow is basically to come and do reading, like a lot, a lot of reading. Because, yeah, that's, you know, um, something that we need to practice, something that we should be practicing even more than we are. So we are going to be um, doing quite some um, reading for tomorrow. So, yeah, of course, if you guys happen to have <clears throat> any questions, any situations regarding the platform, you know, we are still in the last few days um, to solve any circumstances, any doubts you may still have. But if you don't, well, that's great. It's great news because it means, you know, that you have already finished. If you are uh, not done, maybe you are about to be done with the whole um, platform. So as always, if there are any questions, please let me know because, yeah, I'll be more than glad, you know, to go ahead and help you out um, with all of these situations. But yeah, for now, um, I think that we are going to get started into the practice and we are going to start talking about um, a little bit of the, the question for the evening. Now, something that I haven't asked a lot and that I haven't really gotten to know about you is about your food. Like, what's the kind of food that you guys like to eat? And tonight we are going to be talking about that exactly. Um, so I think that... Uh, for the first case, we are going to hear from Rodrigo. In your case, Rodrigo Hernandez, what is your favorite food? But of course, this is not only about your favorite food, but also how do you like it prepared? Like, how do you like to have it? Or when do you like to have it? So let's hear from you, Rodrigo Hernandez. Um, what is your favorite food? And what is the method, of, the method or the way in which you like it to be prepared? Hello, hello, Rodrigo Hernandez. All right, seems like we're not getting an answer right now. Um, how about you, Jared? In your case, what is your favorite food? Oh, that's okay. 
what is your favorite food and how do you like it prepared when you have this um this food hello Harit. oh wait um let's see sin permiso okay that's weird uh all right let me see if i can fix that then because yeah it's of course important that we have your practice or like you guys also um you know being part of the of the lesson let's see uh um no it seems like there are no chances well no, that's weird one second then i will go ahead and try to fear to Bueno, déjenme un momento, igual voy a seguir intentando porque aquí, al menos en Zoom directamente, no, um, no sé, no, no me lo permite, pero vamos a ver en el, en el, los settings directos acá de Zoom. Así que, ya, yeah, just a moment, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be here in a second. Bueno, ya lo cambié, pero creo que no necesariamente va a funcionar de forma inmediata, porque recuerdo que um, lo de la vez anterior, cuando pasó lo de los breakout rooms, creo que no funcionó. No sé si podríamos intentar ahorita, eh, porque sí lo cambié según acá en el setting, porque sí aparecía que todos tenían que estar um, en mudo, pero ajá, no sé si alguien puede intentar... Encender el micrófono. Um, the allowed to use the chat with. Um, let me check out to save. Okay. So, yeah, that's basically all I could do. So, if it doesn't work for you guys, well, that's 
Ya, yeah. bueno, well, ya, yeah. me imagino que hasta mañana se va a reparar entonces, porque si es así, bueno, ya que. Ok, entonces, en ese caso, pues, eh, probablemente nos toque trabajar de forma distinta y esta vez vamos a aplicar un poquito más de typing. Entonces, eh, lo que vamos a hacer es que mientras yo voy cubriendo parte de lo que será el tema, ustedes vayan escribiendo... Eh, la, la respuesta a la pregunta, sí, recuerden, la pregunta era, what is your favorite food and how do you like to have it? Entonces, esta vez vamos a tratar de utilizar, pues sí, ¿verdad? Una herramienta diferente y eso, a la larga, también nos va a ayudar a, eh, a practicar, ¿verdad? El typing. So, yeah, we're going to do it written. So, we're going to use, you know, messages tonight. Um, so, for now, what I will do is that I'll go ahead, you know, and start um, doing this. So this is something that I have done a few times before when, you know, um, we are like having those classes where like there is very few people. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and do that. You know, let's let's do um, typing. So answer the question, but keep it there. Okay, if you can, like keep it there on your on your phone or, 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 or um, your computer. Intended when I ask you, but uh, this is going to be maybe what in like uh, around 10 minutes. So, in around 10 minutes, oh, wait, I haven't tried. Jonathan, in your case, Jonathan, can you please try? Oh, there you go. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Oh, I uh, on my cell phone, and for me, it's so hard to write or type. But in your case, yeah. you have access to your microphone. The thing is that uh, Jared and Rodrigo, we had, uh, antes que, oh. que usted se uniera, estábamos teniendo problemas con, con el micrófono. O sea, a ellos no les permite ahorita activar el micrófono. Pero fui, cambié la, la configuración y se supone que ya se puede. Um, en el caso de Evelyn, can we try, Evelyn, your microphone? Can you please turn on your microphone? Just say anything. Oh, there we go. Hello. Okay, there, there it is. Thank you. Um, so, Jared, can you try now, please? No, it is okay. In this case, only restart the application and connect any anyway. Yeah, and probably is... probably that's oh there we go. Okay, thank you, Harit. So uh sí, parece que eso puede ser, porque si se recuerdan la vez pasada tuvimos un problema similar que era con lo de los breaker rooms, o sea que no estaba que no estaba funcionando. Pero eh... ajá, sí, 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 esto fue entonces esto, Jonathan, gracias por el, perdón, el Rodrigo, por lo que, por lo que nos envió en el chat. Eh... Sí, seguramente es un error, ¿verdad? Que, que pasó en, en la configuración, porque fui, fue eso justo lo que, lo que fui a cambiar. Y pues con los dos que se unieron ahora después, ya funciona. So, ya. Yeah. Bueno, es bueno saber que al menos algunos podrán eh, participar de forma oral, otros van a tener que hacerlo de forma escrita, así como el caso de Jared ahorita que ya nos envió um, la pregunta de la noche. So, you, so, you, so you guys know, is what is your favorite food? And how do you like to have it? Like, you know, not only knowing what's your favorite food, but also. How do you like it? Like, um, how do you prepare your favorite food? And here we have it. So my favorite food, says Harit, is roast beef. I like it well cooked and accompanied with Argentine chorizo, rice, cherry mole, and toast tortillas. This sounds appetizing. This sounds very, very appetizing. It sounds almost, I'm going to share this with you guys. It sounds almost as appetizing as the food that I was about to have, but I had to leave the restaurant because, yeah. I had to come, uh, you know, to the class. But yeah, it sounds very, very, very appetizing. Um, okay, in the case of Rodrigo, Rodrigo says that his favorite food is pork. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, with salad, rice, and fried tortilla. All right, great. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. You know, I will go for that basically every day as well. So very good. Now I know how um, Jared and Rodrigo like their favorite food. Very good. Thank you guys very much. How about in your case, Jonathan? What is your favorite food and how do you like it prepared? For me? Mm -hmm. Okay. My favorite food is, well, in general, seafood. But in a specific same cocktail, I, I remember mm -hmm. that is... Uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Or the pronunciation mm -hmm. of Camara. Shrimp cocktail shrimp. In, uh -huh. in pink sauce. I love it. Oh, that sounds great. It's our chata because I don't, I don't drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't drink soda. 
Well, um, uh, if I was you, I don't know. Do you like lemonade? Yeah, okay, it's so not for okay. me. Is uh, about the diet. Oh, okay. I try to be a, a fit person, a fitness person. It's so hard, but I have I try. Okay, great. and I love it when I go to the Corepec Lake in some restaurants. The the beautiful landscape on the on the, on the lake and uh -huh. eating this food and for me uh, some uh, rare combination i eat the seafood with coffee i really love the coffee i com combine the coffee it's with everything everything food for example when i eat pizza i eat pizza, pizza with, with coffee, coffee. Oh, or okay. nachos with coffee <laughs> that's it's a, so great, but i love it that's a new one you know i have never i mean the weirdest I'm thing only... that i do is that i like chocolate i i mean hot chocolate i will have hot chocolate with pupusas when it's hot here in san miguel but apart yeah. from that i don't drink you know anything hot but yeah so it sounds like you love coffee yeah i i only drink three types of of drinks Mm -hmm. Where which are they? Uh, yeah. Where are tea and some natural refreshments? Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. And coffee. I don't eat juices. I don't eat. I, I don't drink. I don't drink juices, soda, or well, in the case alcoholic drinkings. I know. Oh, okay. Great. Um, so yeah, that's that's not bad, you know. Um, have, trying to have a diet or trying to drink or eat things that are more like natural, um, you know, it's 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 a bit better sometimes because we are um, like very unwilling to do changes and we want our bodies to change. So if you are willing to do that, you know, that's that's amazing because. Uh, many well, in my case, for example, um, it has been almost like two months since I was to the gym the last time. Um, and I tried for a time. I remember that I did try having, you know, like a diet, and it kind of worked for some time. But now it's just like I don't know. You know, it's it, it's it's a bit hard to like go on a diet and and eating only healthy food. Uh, because then you don't, uh, I feel like you don't enjoy life as a whole, but um, probably living case. like, huh? In some cases, I, I, for me, I enjoy the life, practice my, my diet, but in some cases with my, my co-workers at the lunchtime, I eat in I, a tune or, or vegetables, for example. And they eating hamburguesas, hot dogs, pizza, and some gracious foods or fast food. Mm -hmm. I really, I really be. What is the meaning of tentado in the case of the comida? Como... Tempted. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, in this case, I, I really suffer for the diet. But when I see the results, is. Beautiful for me. Yeah, well, and as I said, you know, if it's it a works, hard way. yeah, it's a, it's a long road, as they say. You know, it's it's a long road. Um, but yeah, it's you know something that uh, it's probably not for everyone, but for those you know that try it and that like the way, um, it's it's great. I feel like it's it will be you know the the outcomes are probably the most important thing when you do a diet. Okay, but now. How about you, um, Evelyn, in your case? What is your favorite food and how do you like it prepared? Okay. Um, I consider that I I haven't favorite food, but I like to eat uh, the salad, uh, the chicken salad, maybe. <laughs> and I consider that, uh, um, yeah, yeah, the, the chicken salad. And I usually eat approximately one 
one time one time to, um, on the week and I usually a uh, accompaniment accompaniment with a uh, lemonade and orange juice uh, or water um but no it's not so so the common is most I I I don't know maybe I don't have the favorite food because I know that I hate the onion only <laughs> this thing is so clearly but okay. the favorite food no because I eat um, the different thing for example the sub I don't know how to say rellenos uh, spaghetti um, I don't like the the chicken um I maybe I eat the chicken two twice um on the on the month maybe no it's my favorite food mm, okay I have it. <laughs> yeah maybe. I mean yeah, sometimes it's hard, you know, it's like when somebody asks you, like, what's your favorite song? We have heard so many songs that it's so hard sometimes to pick one. Um, so the same comes for food, I think, because if I simply come and ask you, what's your favorite food? We have had or tried so many kinds or so many types of food. And uh, sometimes it's hard to, like, simply go ahead and pick one of them out of, like, you know, the rest of the things that we have tried. Um, so yeah, it sounds like it's going to be, it's, it could be a very hard decision. And, uh, when you talk about chicken salad, you, you, you refer to like salad with like lettuce, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, uh, the thing is that I have also heard, uh, about chicken salad, but you know, it's only chicken, like chicken and mayonnaise and, 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 uh, no. like in price, I think it's where they sell that they, they call it chicken salad, but it's chicken, mayonnaise. And I think carrots or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's why, you know, it's I was. A little bit of chicken. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. That's actually what I used to do when I was on a diet, you know, when I was trying to be on a diet, those were my kinds of like diet foods, you know, eating only like salad with, um, I don't know if you have ever tried it like that, but uh, with apple, you know, um, like um, the, 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 the lettuce apple i love to do some corn in it some sweet corn and then of course the chicken and a dressing or sometimes um just some honey and that's you know what i what i will eat uh, back when i was uh following or trying to follow a diet but yeah it was a great thing it was a great great thing uh but now as i said i just don't do it anymore i, I kind of stopped i will try uh this coming year once again because this year I kind of failed myself, but still. Um, well, so it's great, guys. It is great that I now know a little bit more about you. And uh, I feel like now we are going to move into this. If you remember, we have this a little bit pending from yesterday. Um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and practice this conversation right away. Uh, we have only a tiny problem. And it's the fact that, I don't know, um, can you try, Jared and uh, Rodrigo, to, like, leave the meeting for a minute and rejoin? Can we please do that? Like, you know, like, leave the meeting and then rejoin to see if your microphones get, like, activated. If it works, um, so, solo por un momento, ¿verdad? Se salen y luego se unen de nuevo, yo los acepto de inmediato, y veamos si funcionan los micrófonos. Si funciona, así para ir de una vez a practicar esta conversación. Si no funciona, bueno, lo vamos a hacer, ¿verdad? Con los pocos que, um, que sí tienen el micrófono funcionando. Así que no sé si podríamos intentarlo. Ya Rodrigo se salió. Jared, no sé si podría en su caso intentar, por favor, el salir. Ese... Ok, there we go. Y ahora me van a decir, me salí, pero no me vuelvo a unir. ¿Quién gana? Bueno, eh, porque sí, el problema, por, los que, por si no saben los demás, eh, pasó, ¿verdad? Que con los compañeros estábamos tratando de resolver que a ellos no se les podía activar el micrófono. Así que vamos a ver ahorita. Um, so, Rodrigo, can we try it? Yeah. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now your microphone is on. Great. Very good. Okay, so uh, it means that, you know, as soon as we get Jared joining back into the meeting, if he does, we are going to go ahead and practice this conversation because I want us, you know, all to have... Um, as much practice as possible and of course 
practice is always going to um, make us, you know, become more fluent and better into um, using the language. If you guys remember, this conversation is about, well, a lucky moment, having some luck actually in life. Um, because this is about an unreal situation. What would you do? What would happen? What would I do? Where would I go if I ever found $750,000? Now, after we do this, I want us to practice saying um, like numbers, you know, like big numbers. So we're going to go to practice the conversation. When we come back, we're going to practice saying big numbers. Here we have $750,000. That's kind of easy. Pero vamos a estar practicando otros números, ¿verdad? Números que se encuentren, qué sé yo, entre los cientos de miles y así, para también tener como una exposición a esto. So, let's see. Uh, I'm going to read the conversation one more time to you guys so that we have, you know, every word clear and fresh in our brains. Um, so here is only Phil and Pat. Those are the two people taking part in the conversation and the conversation goes as following. Look at this. Some guy found $750,000. Um, he returned it and the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You're kidding. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What would you do? Well, I'll go straight to the mall and spend it. I could buy lots of night clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about it. And then you could go to jail. Hmm. You've got a point there. Okay, so that's the conversation. Now, please get a screenshot. I only need one of you guys to get a screenshot because we are basically only going to have one breakout room. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go now into the breakout room to, you know, practice this. And we are going to come back again for, um, you know, to continue with the rest of the topics that we have pending for this evening. So, please, the room is going to be open now. And uh, we're going to have Blanca, Evelyn, Jonathan, and Rodrigo. Rodrigo Hernandez as participant because Rodrigo Mendoza right now he is uh, you know not able to be part of the class in that way so yeah we're gonna have up until 8 32 only four minutes or like around five minutes to go ahead and practice the conversation so let's um, join the room and we'll be back here shortly Yes. Let's practice and for the first time. Um, Phil and you are fat, fat. Let's begin. Look at this. Some guy found $750. He returned it. If I hand the honor simply, think at him with a phone call. You are next. Who? I can hear you. Okay, me. And uh, you're kidding if I found. 750,000, I won't return it so fast. Why? What will you do? Well, I go straight to the, to the mall and spend it. I could buy a lot of night clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find about it and then you could go to jail. Hmm... You, you got a pointer. Well, 
Now you are Phil and I'm Pat. Okay. Look at this. Some guy found 750,000. He, he returned it. And the owner simply thank him at Tinker Hill with a phone call. You are kidding? If I found seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, I wouldn't return. I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What would you do? Well, I'd go straight to the mall and spend it. I could buy a lot of nice clothes and jewelry. And someone might uh, also find about it. And then you go, and then you could go to the jail, to jail. Um, um, you got a point there. Well, another time, I'm Phil and you are Pat. Let's go. Look at this. Some guy found $750,000. He returned and how the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You're kidding. If I found 750000 I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What will you do? Well, I go straight to the mall and spend it. I could buy lots of night nice clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find about it, and then you could go to jail. Mm, you got a pointer. Well, another time you are Phil and I'm Pat. Okay, look at this. Some got found and seven hundred fifty thousand dollar. He returning, and the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You are kidding? If I found seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? Uh, what would you do? Well, I go straight to the mall and spend it. I call by lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Someone um, might also find about it, and then you, and then you could go to jail. Um, you ain't got the bind here. Okay. Well, it's time. Return. So, um, great. I love, you know, seeing how you guys did the practice or hearing how you guys did the practice. That's amazing. Now, uh, we have something that we are going to be doing right now. And as I said, you know, we are going to practice a little bit of, uh, um, sorry, saying or pronouncing big numbers. We have, of course, tons and tons of ways of doing this. Now, I want to know, or I want to try to find out if you guys remember what I told you last time about numbers like this. For example, how would you say that number right there? ¿Cómo se diría ese número? Vamos a ver. Um, in, the, in the caso de Jonathan, how would you say this number, Jonathan? Mm, 1,200. There we go. I don't remember. Yeah, $1,200. Oh, well, so 1,200. Sorry, here it's, it's only 1,200. So yeah, 1,200. Now, what happens if I add this over here? How would you say that now, Jonathan? In this case is 200,000. Okay, 120, uh, sorry. Yeah, 120,000. 120,000. Yeah, 120,000. Basically, um, you know, that will be... Uh, Okay, basically that will be, you know, the the way in which we should do it. 120,000. Now, how about this one over here? Um, 
Blanca, how will we say this amount in English? Hello, Blanca. Um, no, teacher, I don't know. Okay, so you could say one or two, one of two ways. You could say forty-five hundred, forty-five hundred, um, and you could also say forty-five thousand. See, forty-five. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, see, sí, sería forty-five hundred. Or si no. Uh, wait. Ah, no, 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 olvídenlo, no es así, no es así. Así era que funcionaba el 4500. Ahí me equivoqué yo. Así sería. 4500, este es, sí, así es como funciona. 4500, porque tiene que ser 100, o sea, tiene que haber solamente dos ceros nada más. Entonces, sería 4500, sí, así sí funciona el 4500. Si no, sería... 4,500. That's the thing. Sí, así sería para usar el 100. Ahí sí que me, 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 me había perdido por un momento. Entonces, podríamos decir 4,500. Sí, en el caso que digamos 45 cienes. O decir 4,500. Sí, 4,500. Cualquiera de esas dos formas funcionaría. Vamos a ver con otro. Um, let's see. This over here. In the case of uh, Rodrigo Hernández. How would we say this amount, Rodrigo? Sorry? 6,700. Okay, you could say 6,700. Or um, you could also say, you know, uh, 6,700. So yeah, six hundred, six thousand seven hundred or sixty-seven hundreds. Um, so yeah, that will be, you know, the way or the two ways for this one. Now, how uh, would you say if it was like this? Oh wait, no, we're gonna make it simple, just like this. Um, so let's see, Rodrigo, how would you say this amount? This one is a little bit harder, but give it a chance. How do you think this amount will sound in English? Five hundred and eight. Básicamente así, 560,700. Um, how about, vamos a ver, una así grande para Evelyn. Let's see, Evelyn, in your case, how would you say this one? How do you think this uh, amount will have to be said in English? Mm, maybe, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> A seven hundred. Um, two. No. Aquí se lo dividimos. Aquí sería a hundred seven thousand two hundred. Sí. A hundred seven thousand two hundred. Ochocientos setenta mil doscientos. So a hundred seven thousand two hundred. Sí. Este es como más complicado porque primero tenemos que decir, ¿verdad? La centena, que sería 870, uh, se, uh, sorry, 807, ajá, uh -huh, en 70, 870,200, sí. Entonces, 870,200. Can we try it, um, Evelyn? Ok. Digo que era um, eh, 870,000. 200? Yes, there we go. That's the way. So, very good. Yeah. That's how, you know, we are going to be um, saying these amounts. Now, I want to hear you, Jonathan, with one of, uh, oh, I was actually going for the same. With this one. How about that? How would you say these amount, Jonathan? Jonathan? 
2,000? No, <ríe> al revés. Aquí sería primero los 100, ¿sí? Aquí serían 530, entonces podríamos decir 530, ¿sí? 530, pero ese es el problema. 530,000, ¿sí? 530,200. 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, y luego, 200. 200. Uh -huh. 530,200. Y eso que no le estoy metiendo este, números así en medio. O sea, lo estoy dejando un poquito sencillo, digamos. Ya si le metiera esto así, se hace un desorden que... O sea, ni Dios. ¿Sí? Aquí sería 535,287. ¿Sí? 535,287. Y más complicado todavía cuando se agregan millones. Digamos aquí, uy, perdón. Sería 2,535,287. Sí, eso es a, ya es un, una complicación mayor incluso. Pero vamos a simplificarlo otra vez. Sí, vamos a hacer un, un poco sencillo. Y veamos, este de acá, este de acá. ¿Cómo se pronunciaría? ¿Cómo se debería decir ese número? Um, ever. En su caso, let's see if you know how should you say this amount in English. $8,200. very good. ¿Y cuál sería otra forma de decirlo? No sé si recuerdan que hace días yo les hablé acerca de una forma diferente en la cual podemos decir este tipo de cantidades así. Bueno. Uh, 8200, sí, 8200, así sí podrías decirlo, 8200, sí, 82, 100 es, 8200, so yes, you can say 8200 or 8200, so yeah, that's the way, now, um, let's see, uy, my bad, my bad, um, how about if we do this one? Oh, wait, no, vamos a ver, vamos a practicar lo de los hundreds nada más ahorita. Veamos. Así. ¿Cómo sería este, Blanca? Uh, hundred. ¿Y diciendo solo así con cienes? Bueno, diciéndolo solamente con... Ah, ok, ajá. No, I don't know. Sería 5900, sí, 5900. O sea, como les digo, esto es para simplificar un poco y además también para entender, porque pues hoy en día eh, es mucho, mucho, mucho más común que las personas utilicen este tipo de cifras así, o sea, que lo digan de esa forma. Ahora, como les dije anteriormente también, este, básicamente, es el límite de utilizar estas, eh, estas cifras, sí. 9900, ese es el último que podemos utilizar, 9900. Hasta ahí podemos decirlo. 9900 va a significar 9900, ¿verdad? De ahí para allá, básicamente, ya no se puede. O sea, si ya utilizamos, qué sé yo, si decimos uh, 9901, eso no se va a poder. Porque esto solo funciona, eso, el 100 así, solo funciona si los últimos dos números son ceros, como es el caso de lo que tenemos acá. Entonces, aquí, por eso sí funciona. Pero, si fuese diferente, eh, pues, no va a funcionar. Así que, eh, esa es como, ¿verdad?, la única pequeña diferencia que existe, ¿sí? Porque acá, pues, así lo vamos a decir, 9900. Um, ahora, por ejemplo, pongamos otro. Digamos, este así, um, sería 6200, ¿sí? 6200, 6500, Um, si fuese de esta forma um, sería nada más 1500 ¿sí? 1500 significa verdad 15000 1700 
perdón, 1500, 1700 sería 1700, um, 1800, 1800, si no tenemos, por ejemplo, este otro, 5800, 5800 y así, ¿verdad? Esto es, como les digo, para los números completos, o sea, los, los, las centenas completas, cuando los últimos dos números son ceros. Si ya el último número fuese un 2, un 3, cualquiera, o el segundo número eh, pasa a ser, um, por ejemplo, así un 7, ahí sí ya no se puede utilizar, ya no funciona, sino que simplemente va a funcionar cuando son así, completos. Eh, bueno, esto con las que son un tanto sencillas, ya les dije. Hay unas que son un poco más complejas, un poco más difíciles, pero pues vamos a seguir practicando eso más adelante. Por ahora, vamos a ver un poco acerca de los antonyms, ¿sí? When we talk about antonyms, we are referring to um, two words that are opposites. Uh, opposites to, of course, the original words. So now, the job that we're going to do, or the job that we're going to have right now, is that we can or go ahead to try to find the opposites. We have one example here. We have accept and refuse. Among this, among these words, we're going to have um, eight more couples or eight more couple of words, of course, that are antonyms. So what we're going to do is that I will give you guys around two minutes, okay? While I give you those two minutes, of course, I will be trying to read all the words to you so that, you know, you have an idea of what are the words that we're looking for. But um, try to take a look around, you know, all the words and find words that are opposites, which is, of course, the idea of antonyms. So we have accept and, and refuse. Those are the first couple. Then we have the rest of the words that are admit, Agree, borrow, deny, disagree, dislike, divorce, enjoy, find, forget, lend, lose, marry, remember, save, and spend. Those are, you know, the, um, like the main words that we have. Now, try to go ahead and find unmarried couples so you know words that do not match with one another so which ones are those words we're going to start with admit what would be the contrary to the word admit hmm? okay deny deny very good so for admit it's deny um how about in the case of the word agree That's an easy one. Disagree. Disagree. Mm -hmm. Disagree. Okay. Let's see. How about in the case of the word, um, the next one that we have is borrow. Borrow. Uh -huh. What is the meaning of this? Um, borrow. What can be the meaning of borrow? What do you think? The mean? What does this word sound like to you? Borrow. borrow okay i'll tell you an example can i borrow that pen from you can i borrow that pen from you borrow Okay, the thing is, so borrow is one action. Esa es una cosa que en español nosotros tenemos un tanto sencilla. Esta palabra, ese par de palabras para nosotros en español son bien fáciles porque utilizamos la misma para ambas, ¿sí? O sea, yo digo, préstame tal cosa. Y después yo realicé esa acción, pero yo digo, oh, sí, él me prestó esta otra cosa. Entonces, eh, en español es la misma palabra, ¿sí? Prestar y prestar. En cambio, en inglés hay diferencias. Una es borrow, sí, que significa prestar, pero el borrow, la persona que hace el borrowing es la persona que está obteniendo las cosas, sí, yeah. obteniendo las cosas. Ahora, lend sería el contrario, 
que es cuando yo presto a alguien algo. Sí, borrow es obtener y lend es dar o facilitar. Entonces, borrow and lend, básicamente esa será, ¿verdad? La, la diferencia que van a tener, ¿sí? Borrow es obtener el eh, beneficio y lend es básicamente um, dar el beneficio, ¿sí? Entonces, borrow and lend. Um, ahora, una cosa complicada es cuando ustedes, por ejemplo, están rentando en, en el caso de como un apartamento, ¿verdad? Ustedes no dicen I'm borrowing an apartment. ¿Cuál es el motivo por el cual no dicen I'm borrowing an apartment? Porque el borrow, en realidad, también significa eh, que ustedes están obteniendo aquella cosa, o sea, como que se la pueden llevar, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, un carro, ustedes sí, you can borrow a car. You can, like, you know, ask someone, hey, can I borrow your car for a minute? O sea, como, te puedo, ¿me puedes prestar tu carro un momento? Sí. En cambio, el apartamento, como es un inmueble, entonces ese se queda donde está. Por eso mismo decimos, I am lending an apartment. Sí, significa que alguien me está prestando a mí el apartamento. Entonces, es un poco complejo porque sí lo es. Lo mismo con el dinero. O sea, no decimos, can I borrow some money? Sino que es al revés. Utilizamos a la otra persona y decimos, can you lend me some money? Sí, can you lend me some money? Porque... Eh, Perdón, borrow, por lo general, se utiliza con cosas un tanto sencillas, o sea, cosas tal vez no tan, tan importantes. Entonces, eso es como también una diferencia que existe ahí entre el borrow y el lend. Pero bueno, sigamos con el siguiente. Sería dislike, me parece, porque deny y disagree ya los usamos, así que sería dislike. Uh, so, yeah, dislike. What is the contrary of dislike? It's very easy, right? Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy. So when you dislike something, is of course when you're not having like the best time. But when you enjoy something is when you are having the time of your life. So yeah, dislike and enjoy. Um, how about divorce? Mary. Divorce. Great. That would be the one. Divorce is the contrary to marry. Yeah, because when you divorce is when you separate from someone. And when you marry is when you join that person. So yeah, divorcing and marrying are, of course, contraries of one another. Now, how about uh, we go get a, a go? Uh, uh, sorry, we go ahead and get this one. Find that's the one. Um, lose. There or in go. This Find uh, and is. Lose. Lose. It's the contrary of lose. So when you find something, it means that before you had lost it. All right. How about forget? Remember. 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 Very good. Or forget. It was or it is supposed to be remember. So yeah, that's how we go ahead and do it. Okay. So there we go. For forget, it will be remember and um what is the last one that we have cuál sería las últimas que nos quedan a ver quién quién las quién ha seguido eh, la línea yo sí ya las tengo pero ustedes cuáles son las últimas que nos quedan okay very good save and spend sí esas son otras que a, a muchos a veces se les hacen complejas o sea, el saber qué significa, ¿verdad? Porque pues el save lo vemos eh, muy a menudo en videojuegos y cosas así. Y pues sí, significa lo que ustedes piensan. Save significa guardar. Um, ahora, una cosa eh, que también muchas personas eh, ven extraña es cuando utilizamos spend, porque no, por lo general spend se utiliza con el dinero, pero también se puede utilizar con el tiempo. Ahora, una cosa que, que sí es compleja es que cuando estamos hablando en el dinero, spend se utiliza para referirse a algo casi como malgastar, ¿sí? Save, pues es guardar. Eso siempre significa guardar. Pero spend significa, cuando hablamos de dinero, básicamente malgastar. Pero cuando hablamos acerca de tiempo, 
significa pasar tiempo con alguien. O sea, como si estoy hablando de dedicarle el tiempo a esta persona, como hacerlo, o sea, hacer algo bueno. En cambio, cuando lo decimos en, en, en dinero, es algo malo, básicamente lo peor, ¿verdad? Que, que uno puede hacer con su propio dinero. O sea, gastarse el dinero como en algo que sea de choto, por decir así. Entonces, esas son como, ¿verdad? Contrariedades que existen a veces entre una cosa y la otra, pero pues así se utiliza, ¿sí? Si ustedes hablan de dinero con la palabra spend, significa que es dinero mal gastado. Pero si ustedes hablan de tiempo con la palabra spend, significa que es tiempo invertido. Así que, ¿verdad? Ahí estarán esas diferencias. Ahora, la, eh, oh, bueno, la, in la invitación es a que ustedes traten de encontrar más antónimos, ¿sí? Para mañana, la verdad, sería genial si logramos, ¿verdad?, obtener al menos dos antónimos cada uno y los podemos compartir. Como les digo, el día de mañana vamos a estar haciendo varias cosas ya diferentes a lo que serían como las clases principales, porque esto básicamente es lo último que tenemos que tratar que se relaciona de forma directa con las clases. En its past models, o sea, los verbos modales, pero del pasado. Now, use would have or should have plus a past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. Esto lo utilizamos para hablar acerca de cosas que pu puede, pudieron haber pasado. Sí, pudiste haber hecho. O sea, opiniones o sugerencias, ¿verdad? Acerca del pasado. O sea, no cosas que podemos resolver, que podemos hacer, sino que pudimos haber resuelto, que pudimos haber hecho. Ahora, ¿cómo va entonces? Tenemos, por ejemplo, que podríamos decir... What should I have done? Sí. What should I have done? ¿Qué debí haber hecho? What should I have done? Y esto, por ejemplo, eh, se puede utilizar en algo eh, similar a lo que aprendíamos el día de ayer. O sea, en algo imaginario, porque el pasado pues ya no lo podemos arreglar, ¿verdad? Ya no podemos volver y cambiar lo que hicimos. Entonces, en este caso simplemente es para eso, para aclarar situaciones tal vez. Eh, pero dice, what should I have done? Opciones. Well, you should have told them about it. Sí. Debiste haberles dicho acerca de esto. You should have told them about it. Or, you shouldn't have hidden it. Sí. You shouldn't have hidden it. No debiste haberlo ocultado. Esa palabra, hidden, significa ocultar, claro, pero en el, en el pasado, ¿verdad? Hide sería en el presente. Sí, pero hidden es en el pasado, participio. Now, we have this other one. What would you have done? Esto es para una sugerencia. ¿sí? What would you have done? ¿Qué habrías hecho tú? ¿Sí? What would you have done? Y ahí o sea, ya ustedes contestan y pueden decir, ¿verdad? I would have called him. ¿Sí? I would have called him. Yo le habría llamado. I wouldn't have sent him an email. Esa podría ser otra opción. I wouldn't have sent him an email. O sea, yo no le habría mandado un correo. Y así como estas, como les digo... O sea, existen muchas otras situaciones que ustedes pueden expresar cuando estamos simplemente tratando de dialogar, de resolver una situación del pasado. Entonces, estos verbos modales los utilizamos, eh, como les decía, en formas no iguales, pero sí un poco similares a la utilización de las... Um, perdón, de lo que se nos presentaba ayer, que era pues, este tema de los unreal conditionals, ¿sí? Vamos a hablar simplemente acerca de cosas posibles, pero que básicamente ya no tiene caso que lo discutamos. Igual que los unreal conditionals, son simplemente cosas como un tanto imaginarias. Pero bueno, so, for now, basically, guys, that was it, you know, that was the information that we had to cover. Eso era básicamente la parte que eh, teníamos de la plataforma, Uh, so tomorrow, as I said, we're going to be working on many other things. You know, we're going to be talking about um, more phrasal verbs or, well, we're going to be talking about phrasal verbs. We're going to also try to learn about idioms and all sorts of things that, of course, um, you know, can help us embrace and gather more experience in the English language. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for your attention. Thank you for your participation this evening. I hope you have an amazing rest of your night. And I also hope I'll see you tomorrow. So bye-bye for now. And see you tomorrow for our second last class.
See you tomorrow. Okay. See ya. Bye.